Our dear Father, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us to this point in our journey. To bring us to this point in this convocation. We bless you, Lord. You're on a journey, you're on a walk. And we don't want to disrupt your work. We want to continue it until you bring it to a final conclusion. So, Lord, we, ask, we, we, want to, we want to just bow at your feet and wait upon you to speak to us whatever way you want. We are praying that, Lord, we will obey you so that we shall be in the front of this revival. Lord, we pray that you will not leave us alone. You will not leave us alone. You will, you will, you will handle us. You will touch us. You will, you will do whatever you will do so that we will not, will not, be, will not lag behind. Dear Lord, we pray that as we wait on you tonight, that you will speak to us, begin to speak to us, and that tomorrow and next tomorrow and next tomorrow, you will speak to us conclusively. The Bible studies, in the workshops, in every segment of this meeting, you will speak to us. Dear Lord, we pray that you will not, will not be slow in hearing you. That we will not, will not slack in hearing you. We will be active in hearing you. That Lord, at the end of this meeting, we have cause to glorify your name. We are praying that we will be safe and secure. We will not run in the, in the course of these days. That Lord, the children who are coming from different quarters will also enjoy this meeting. Daddy, we want to ask you that from this moment onwards, that you take over this meeting and you do your will. That you speak to us in the living echoes of your tone. That Lord, we will not miss anything you want to say to us. Hallowed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The theme of the convocation is lift up your eyes. If you have a copy of this, if you don't have a copy of this, you must go back and get it. Um, the, 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 the meeting is, is loaded. I want you to please make sure that you get a copy of this. The Bible study is here, the workshop is here. And I don't want to say much. This is the opening charge. And I want to take it quickly so that we can go today and get prepared for the meeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes. That's what the Word of God says to us. But before I, before I step down on the team, or before I allow the team to, to speak, let me, let, me, let me share with you from the book of John, chapter number 5, chapter number 4, John 4. Um, I'll, read, I'll read a passage for you. It's going to be the passage, it's going to be the, um, the passage for tonight. John chapter 4, uh, verses 1. I'll stop it somewhere and just share a very quickly and very briefly with you to prepare you for the meeting. It's going to be a loaded meeting, it's going to be a, a very, very important meeting in our lives. The Bible says, When therefore the Lord had, when therefore the Lord knew that the Pharisees, had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he let, left Judah and departed again into Galilee. And he must need go to Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat, sat, sat thus on the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a young, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples we are gone away to the city to buy food. Then said the woman of Samaria unto them, unto him, I see that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of water of me. How am I, how am I a woman of Samaria? Sorry. Then when 
Then said the woman of Samaria unto the him, How is it that thou, being a, a, a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have nothing, no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have, given, have asked of him, would have given thee living waters. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then has thou that living water? And thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be of he, in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I may drink, that I may, that I may thirst not, neither come to drink, to draw. 16. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said unto her, said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou, thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. In this, in that, thou stayest truly. The woman said unto her, or him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our father worshipped in this mountain, and you say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain, nor that Jerusalem worship the Father. Worship you know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh soul to worship him. God is spirit, that are worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's stop here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus was on the move. The first part of the story tells us that he was baptizing with his disciples somewhere, but Jesus was not baptizing, and John was baptizing in that vicinity. There was a comparison between disciples of John and disciples of Jesus. He was baptizing more, and Jesus had to leave that place. And he must needs go through Samaria. He must needs go through Samaria. Then he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, next to the pastor of ground that Joseph gave, Jacob gave to his son Joseph. I'm reading it again, but to pay attention, because I may not speak much on it tonight. He came to the pastor of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat on the well, that, and it was about the sixth hour. What sixth hour? What sixth hour? What does your Bible say? I have a simple Bible. Tell us what that hour is. Twelve noon. Jesus came and sat at the well at twelve noon. In the afternoon, hot afternoon. Weary, tired. Some people are going away to buy food in the village. Just at the well. Why was just at the well? Because there was, an, there was a revival encounter. There was an encounter of a revival. You will soon see it. Just sat at the well. And bring that in the course of these days, Jesus will meet with you. Hallelujah. That Jesus will deliberately meet with you. Even though you have been trying to dodge Jesus, even though the, the atmosphere doesn't look correct, 
those people have been telling us this and that. Many of us are dejected. Many of us are frustrated. Many of us cannot even look up. But this meeting is saying, look up. Jesus is there waiting for you. He sat on the well. He was waiting for this woman. And he said, oh, it's, it's, it's actually, I was, I was perplexed when I saw that this woman was the woman that Jesus was waiting for for revival. Among all the people in that Samaritan village, a woman who could not come to the well when others went, she had to come at 12 o'clock because everybody had to be away when she came to the well. She was a lonely woman. She was almost cast away. And you know, I'll soon see why the woman is so lonely. She was not a, a candidate for revival at all. There's no way she could have had revival. She was just living for the last day, waiting to, be, to die. Some of us are in that same condition tonight. We're just waiting. Don't know what, when, when, when your last meal is coming. Things are looking so tough, so difficult. Like this woman. Her own case is a different, there's a different story where her own case is like that. But you may be here tonight and you are saying, what are we living for? Nigeria is getting from bad to worse. There's a war in, 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 in Jerusalem, I mean in, in Jewish land. The war was with Hamas. There's a war in Ukraine. Everywhere there's a confusion. Even here, you know that the kidnappers may come to your house this night. Say amen to that. Eh? <laughs> it's not everything the preacher says, you say amen, you say amen. <laughs> you will not come to my house, even if you come to your house. But <laughs> Hallelujah. Things are looking tough. But let me tell you why they are looking tough. Because there's a revival on the way. Are you hearing me? There's a revival on the way. Lift up your heads. Lift up your eyes. Be cheerful. What we're expecting of God will come. He's been building up for years. He's been building up. And it's going to come. It's going to come. I don't know whether this is the last revival. I don't know whether it's the semi-final revival, but this is one of the last revivals in the age that is going to come. Whether you like it or not, we are going to see a revival. I'm just praying that you will be in the first vanguard, the first people to have this revival. Look at this woman. She was nowhere near somebody who could say we have a revival. But here she was, looking dejected, looking for long. And, she, and, and Jesus was waiting for her at the well. Disciples had gone to buy food, and Jesus was sat there. Jesus himself was tired, but this is a job that must be done. Revival is a job that must be done. And we don't know how revival will come. We don't know how revival will break forth. Even now. But I want to tell you that revival is coming. Because Jesus is alive, revival is coming. Let me tell you, revival comes according to time. I would say there are six hours in a day. I mean, twelve hours in a day, and twelve hours in the night. Twelve hours in the days, the days of revival, and the day must come before the night, or the night must come before the day. But it, they must come regularly. Are you hearing me? If the night has come, if the night has come, there's nothing you can do to bring revival. You have to wait till the day breaks forth. And when the day breaks forth, there's nothing you can do about revival. You have to wait for the night to come before there's no revival. Through the day, there's going to be a revival. Seed time and harvest time, day and night, they cannot, they cannot but come. And I see the master saying, doesn't matter what the world is saying, my time table must come. I thank God that the time table is going to come. Where the early beginnings of revival, maybe 5 a.m., don't look as to say the day is broken, but the day is broken. If you hear very well, you hear the cock crowing and everything happening. It says that revival is about to come. I'm saying this so that I will encourage you. Let no man 
Let no man of a woman among us say, Brother, this thing you are saying is a lie. Because you may miss your position in the revival. Pray that you will be in the vanguard. Pray that you will be in the vanguard. Brace up. Have hope. There was this woman coming to the well to fetch water in the afternoon because nobody came in the afternoon. Only her. She wanted to come and escape the case of everybody. She wanted to come at a time when nobody else was coming to the well. She came in the heat of the day. And I thank God that Jesus was sitting at the well, tired, waiting for her. Waiting for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Jacob was, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat there on the well. It was about the sixth hour, twelve noon. He sat there, weary. Hallelujah. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water, to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For disciples were going away into the city to buy food. So there was a close conversation between Jesus and that woman. Nobody was there. What did the woman say to Jesus? What did Jesus say to the woman? Jesus started the conversation. Give me to drink. Give me water to drink. Please, fetch some water for me. Fetch some water for me. This is Jacob's well. That they have been drinking for generations. You know when Jacob lived? Up to, from the time Jacob lived to this time, they have been drinking from this well. It has not dried up. They were still fetching water from it and drinking. Hmm? Which shows me that if God removes water from this earth, man will not live. So God gives us a constant revival, so to speak, so that we can be able to live. But the main revival we're waiting for, when it comes, it'll be glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew? Ask a drink of me, and the woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. How is it that you a Jew? From your dress, I can see that you a Jew. I ask a, a Samaritan to give you water. The woman was, the woman was, I don't know whether she was sad, she was mad. She didn't expect anybody at the well. She went to go and draw water and go away quietly. For this here was this Jew at the well. The woman didn't know her mother, she didn't know her before. And this man was asking the woman, please give me water to drink now. Draw, draw a little water for me to drink. Jesus said to her, the woman said to Jesus, Why is it, why is it that thou being a Jew, ask it drink of me, which I'm a Samaritan woman. So the Samaritans have no dealing with the Jews. Samaritan cannot ask a Jew for anything. They have no relationship at all. And Jesus was not allowed to ask that woman anything. Because the Jews and Samaritan, they look different from their dressing. The woman asked Jesus, how, how, how is it that you are asking me, a Samaritan, to give you a drink? In the shame, the woman will have been insulting Jesus. The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. In fact, for Jesus to be there, means that Jesus is not obeying customs. Otherwise, he could have gone around what he was in Samaritan village and asked the Samaritan woman to give him water. And he was alone with the woman. Oh, who said they saw, her, saw him? It's all these questions. But the crossing her, the mind of Jesus, crossing the mind of the woman. And they were in that place alone in the afternoon, hot afternoon. I want to imagine the scenario that we understand what we are saying. When Jesus is after you, when Jesus comes after you, hmm, 
he will, he will, he will not think of any situation that men think of. He will not consider any situation that men consider. He will come straight for you. Because he wants to bring a revival. So he was sitting at the well, waiting for this woman to come. He knew that the woman was coming. He sent away the disciples to go and buy food. And he sat there alone at the well. And this woman came. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus answered him and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, if thou knowest the, the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have thou would have asked of him and would have given thee living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said to the woman, say, look, I'm begging you for this water. But if you know the gift of God, if you know about living water, you have asked me, if you, are, if you are the one to ask me, I will have given you. And they turned into an argument. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep. From whence, from whence then has thou that living water? What do you want to say to him? Sir, this well is very deep. You have nothing to draw. You have no, I don't see a bucket. I don't see a rope. The well is very deep. From whence have you then this living water? From where will you get living water you are going to give me? Had that greater than our father Jacob, we drank, we gave us the well and drank thereof there himself. And his children and his cattle. So Jacob's well is a very important well in history. It belongs to just Joseph and his children and children, children, children. They have been drinking from that well. It has not dried up. No matter the season, it's, it's still there. It doesn't matter what the season is. This well you must get water there. That's why everybody from the village came there to draw water. Jacob's well. That's a great provision of God. And I don't know whether there is a Jacob's well in your life. And it could deny you from having a revival. But this woman, Jesus persisted. Well, I see. See Jacob's well. You don't have to need to draw. The well is very deep. So how, how are you talking to me like that? The woman was almost hostile. But my master had a reason, a reason for talking to her. You will not see the reason. Hallelujah. Just as I said to her, if thou knowest the gift of God and what it, it and, what, and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. Hallelujah. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep from whence then has thou the living water? I don't know our father Jacob, I don't know our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself, and his children and his cattle. So as I said unto her, Whoever drinketh of this well shall thirst again. Eh? If you drink of this Jacob's well, what happens? You will thirst again. You will come here to pray again. That's, it, that's, it, that's, that's, what, that's the difference between Jacob's well and the well that Jesus gives. It will never be sufficient for you. You will thirst again. You will thirst again. This is why I used to come with the Jerichan because he was the only one who would drink of it. People had families. They would come with Jerichans when the time comes to draw for a season. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. I don't know that I understand what I'm saying. This, soft, this water she's drawing, it has a limit. It can last for some time. It will finish. She has to come back again. I'm praying that you will not go away with an anointing like that. Hallelujah. It is an anointing. Anointing that stays for some time and finishes. 
And many people were, you just know that that's well, because that well was certainly a purpose. But that was not the purpose of God. They will soon see the purpose of God. Jesus said to her, Whoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. If you drink of this water, you will thirst again. This anointing does not last forever. Brothers, if you, if, 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 if you have a meeting and you fasted for 40 days, 60 days, what will happen? What will happen? You have a Jerichan anointing. For 40 days, for 60 days. Immediately after the meeting, you go back to normal. Have you tested that kind of anointing? I'm trying to tell you that those of us who are saying anointing, anointing, we have not seen what we are looking for. Hallelujah. We have not seen what we are looking for. When what we are looking for comes, we thank God. I want to, to forget all, all that you have been drinking. Some of us can get anointing that will last for 100 days, 100 days anointing. Won't talk to anybody, you will just keep to yourself. If anybody annoys you, say, wait, 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 I'm coming down. And truly, you are coming down. I'm coming down. Look, I said, Look, there's a water I'm going to give you. Huh? What, whoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst. But what else does I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's the revival we're waiting for. That's the revival we're waiting for. And it must be a permanent revival. That whatever water I give you shall swell well up in you. You don't need to come and draw here again. Well up in you. Hallelujah. It will up in you. It shall be. It shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. This is what we are looking for now. What that will spring up inside of you whenever you have a need. What one do you prefer? Do you prefer to go and draw? Do you prefer the water that wells up inside of you? Which one do you prefer? Which one do you prefer? Eh? The one inside. So we must pray. We must beg God. It's time for it. The time for it has come. But if we don't know about it, and we keep going to drop from the well, we may, we may be satisfied. We may be, be alright. Every time you are thirsty, you go to the well and drop. And come back and put in your house and be, and be drinking. Even spiritually, it will happen to you when there is a meeting. You will fast and pray. And you will not do anything wrong. Don't talk to anybody anyhow. After 50 days, after 100 days, say we are ready. In those days when we are going to church to preach, people will gather around us. Nobody will touch us. We won't answer any question. Because we are kind of the kind of anointing in our stomach. Once we finish preaching, we say, Hallelujah. We jump out. Now, but where is my food? That's what? What do I call it? He doesn't do anything. I'm looking for something genuine. What am I looking for? A well of water springing up into everlasting life. Hallelujah. Eh? That's what I'm looking for personally. And it only comes from Jesus. It's not, bad. It's not that you fasted forever that we give you that water. Amen? 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 And this water does not cease to come because there's a problem in the country. No. No. God is going to give us this water. Hallelujah. I say God is going to give us this water. Amen. Because the time for it to, to happen has come. We have drank enough. We have, we have, we have fasted enough. We have prayed enough. We have told many things enough. And each time we prayed and fasted, there's a critical anointing. After it, Kai, the thing finished. 
for this time around, you are going to introduce us to a water that will spring up in our hearts unto everlasting life. Are you hearing me? That's why I'm so happy. It's not going to be everybody at the same time. There's going to be people in the vanguard. Look at this woman. The only, the only sin, the, 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 the village will have said the, the, the worst sinner in the village. That's when Jesus came and sat on the wealth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you're a sinner here. I want to assure you that your sin does not matter. In this revival, you will agree to come to Jesus. And you can be the first person that Jesus will introduce into this water and into this revival. I don't know. Some of us have been pursuing revival for years. But we may not be qualified. But the sinful woman, Jesus put her in that whole village. The sinful woman may be the best who is qualified. It's not a matter of how far you have sought Jesus. How far you have sought Jesus is important. But when it comes to this revival in Samaria, look at the person that Jesus picked for the revival. A woman who is a sinner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse what am I now? Verse 13, verse 14, verse 15. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that thirst not, neither come hither to draw. You see, you see what said? Give me this water. Did I do what? Did I do what? I will be thirsty again. Neither come to this well to draw. He saw what we give a way of escape. She doesn't want to come to, she doesn't need to come to the well. She can be drinking of this water. And she doesn't need to come to the well to draw. That's, that's a way of escape for her. She does not know the real reason why Jesus wants to give her this water. Hallelujah. Jesus said unto her, if you want this water, what do you do? What do you do? Huh? Go and call your husband. This water has a condition. Are you hearing me? This water is not to be given to anybody who comes. If you want to drink this water, there's a condition. What's the condition? Go and call your own husband. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go call thy husband and come hither. Go and bring your husband. If you want this water. So this water is not a water that is given to everybody. Before revival, there must be a clean up of the, of the environment. There must be something that must be done to put us in the condition for revival. And one of the greatest conditions for revival is go and call your husband. When, when Jesus said that, what did the woman do? The woman answered and said, I have had five, I have, I have, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast had, thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. In that says thou truly. Hallelujah. Amen. The woman said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Go and call thy husband. The woman has lived with five men who are not her husband. The sixth one now is not her husband. And she's looking for living waters. And look at the condition of this woman who came to Jesus. He's looking for living waters and came to Jesus that day. My brothers and sisters, the things of Jesus are not for anybody and everybody. You must meet the conditions if Jesus must give you this water. What's the condition? What's the condition? Go and call your husband. The man looked left, looked right, looked up, looked down. 
They don't have any husband. Jesus said, you are correct. All the people that are living with you are not your husband. You are disqualified. Unless something happens here now. That's why Jesus led her, led her, led her back into the living waters. And she became the revivalist in that village. Brothers and sisters, I want to say to you that you may not be the most righteous man here. You may not be the most qualified person here. I don't know how Jesus works. You may be the partaker of this revival. But go and call your husband. What can husband mean? What can husband mean to us? Go and call your husband. And I want to say to you that this is a very serious question that Jesus normally asks anybody who wants the water. What, what, what do you think that your husband, who is your husband? Hallelujah. Who is your husband? Maybe you're not even Maybe one of the students around, you say, I don't have a husband, leave me alone. That is not what Jesus is saying. That's not why that you, are not, that you don't have a fiscal husband does not mean you don't do the revival. So what can husband mean to you? Amen. Amen. You have to think of that because that is the cross of the matter. Everybody that needs a revival must be under some authority. Do you hear what I said? You know what I said? Either your husband or something. Everybody who needs this water must be under some kind of authority. I said, go and call your pastor. Go and call your disciple. Go and call the man over your life. We don't give water to anybody carelessly. We don't just give water to anybody who says, I want Go and get us your. Where's your husband? For few children here now, when they say, Where's your husband? It may mean, Where's your father? Who has authority over you? And you're not submitting to his authority. Your father in the house, you're not submitting to his authority. Your uncle in the house, the man who is paying your school fees, sending you to school, you're living in his house. You're not submitting to his authority. You are doing whatever you like. And when they say, go and call your husband, say, I have no husband. Yes. Jesus says, say, yes. I know you have no husband. I know. You have had five. And the one you live with now is not even your husband. You must think about this because this is where the red is going to hook us. Go and call your husband. Hallelujah. Your husband may be your father. And you don't have a father. Indeed. Your husband may be your disciple. How many of us have disciples? Who we can say, this is my disciple. Go and find out from me whether I will drink this water or not. Who are many of us in a disciples relationship? They say to your disciple, I say, this man. And you ask the man, say, are you the disciple of this person? He said, yes. And only one disciple. One main disciple. You see, you are dodging many things. You are dodging many things. And it's not possible to dodge it with Jesus. And Jesus is the only one who has the rivers of living water. And if you don't answer the question, you are, you are missing it. Are you hearing me? You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? Take it seriously. When in days of revival again, look up. Stop looking around. Stop looking at the economy. Stop looking at anything. Those are not the issues now. The issue now is where is your disciple? Go and call your husband. Are you hearing me? It's, it's so quiet now. Where is your husband? Who is your father? Who is your disciple? Where is he? When last do you see him? If you are told to go and call your disciple now, where will you go? You go and tell someone else, please come and be my disciple. Come and be my disciple. This is a very serious junction we have come to now. 
Because there are many of us who want a revival, but we don't know what makes for revival. The, the water that, when you drink it, you will never thirst again. You prefer to go and fast for 40 days, 100 days, 200 days before you come and do a small meeting. Then the thing clears again. You have a different anointing and you are not taking it. And God wants to give you a new anointing. But new anointing has a condition. What's the condition? Eh? And this is a matter we must take very seriously from now. Very seriously. Very seriously. If you don't take it seriously, you will not get what you are looking for. Are you hearing me? You are not hearing me. This is the cross of the matter. The cross of the matter. Hallelujah. Go and call your what? Husband. This husband may mean several things. May mean go and call the father who is your father. Many of these young children, you think you have fathers. You're not you're not you're not behaving towards that man as if you were your father. Some of you have revolted. Some of you are not in relationship with him. Some of you are just yes sir, yes sir. When you go out go to school, you you go and obey, you and do whatever you like. You must have a father. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes. And take it very seriously because you may not be in the first vanguard of revival. You not even be in revival at all if you have no father. Somebody was telling me a story of the students in the university. How they misbehave a lot. See a student telling a certain under student. They are dating. They are doing many, many things on campus. Why? Because they have no father. We will call them to order. We will tell them in the right order. The due order. They tell them, they, they go to their classmates in the youth call. They call somebody papa, somebody mama. Then you go to your papa and you are telling him stories. How can somebody who is your classmate be your father? Are you hearing me? You are not hearing me. How can somebody who is your, who is your classmate be your father? Somebody you can disobey. Somebody you can say, no, I don't want to agree to what you are saying. Somebody you can listen to him and go away. It's not your father. It's not your disciple. And this is the thing that is going to stop us, give us a limited revival again. And God is striking us this night. Lift up your eyes. Answer the question. The question is, who is your father? Who is your husband? Go and call thy husband and come here. Go and bring your husband. And everybody must have how many husband? Everybody must have how many husband? Eh? Oh, you don't believe in us. You don't believe in what we are saying. You want two husbands? How many husbands do you have? Five or one? <laughs> Where is he? <coughs> Go and bring him. And if you say I don't have a husband, then it means you don't understand what we are saying. That's your father at home. He is paying your school fees. Are you obeying him? That's your disciple. Of course, many of us don't have disciples again. We don't have anybody we are reporting to again. And this is where it's going to hook us. Go and call your father. You are with Jesus now. He said, Go and call your father. Go and call your husband. Go and call your disciple. I know that you're on the campus, and that on the campus there are no disciples, there's no nothing. If I hear them discussing, one man has 
five, boy, five, five girlfriends. You are in courtship with four already. Four of them, you are courtship with one, two, three, four. One girl has four boys she's courting with. How can you do that? Look, in this particular meeting, I want to know that God is looking for something. Are you hearing me? He said, why do you know? I said, I know because I know what's happening on campus. And some of you are on break now. You are going back next month. And if you don't solve the plan before you go back. Because if you marry somebody who is not your husband, you are going to be lost in the wilderness for several years. For forever. Trying to patch with a, a marriage that is not your own. That's why several men commit adultery after they are married. That's why several men do many things. That you, can't, you, can't, you can't hold them. You can't say, that's why several men cannot come into discipleship. Because they have made an eternal mistake. So go and call your husband. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope that in this first meeting of this holy convocation, before the messages begin to come, that you are going to deal with this matter of your husband. Are you hearing me? Go and get him. Go and get him. Jesus wants to see your husband. And the husband is one person. I, 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 maybe the Lord will explain this to us when we, uh, when we go ahead in this meeting. Go and call your husband. That was the end of the story. Thank God that Jesus was there with this woman. I don't want to over, I don't want to pass this stage. Thank God that Jesus was there with this woman. But please, the questions that Jesus is asking in this meeting is too crucial for us to mistake. Your husband. Think about it. Think about it. if you have been playing tricks. This revival is not for you. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? If you have been playing tricks, I don't think that God is going to give you this revival. Go and call your husband. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to. To just stop here is a terminating point for me tonight. Who is your husband? The woman she couldn't tell. Her. She couldn't tell. Her. She couldn't say who is her husband. So I have no husband. I have what? That's the truth. That's why Jesus should have mercy. I have no husband. So said unto her, that has well said. I have said the truth. I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. <laughs> and he whom thou livest with now is not even your husband. In this, that, in that, that says truly. Hallelujah. The woman was in a fix. She wanted to change the topic of discussion. And maybe you want to change the topic of discussion, but Jesus is, has fixed you here now. He's not going to leave you. We have done so much in this meeting. Go and call your husband. On the very first day of this meeting, I see the Lord asking now, go and call your husband. And if you don't take it seriously, you don't take it earnestly, don't take it as a gospel truth, I don't think you are going to be in this revival. Look at this woman, she has no husband. She said that I don't have a husband. But she was in the revival. Because I see that she encountered Jesus. And Jesus sorted out her problem. Even though she was trying to dodge, at the end of the day, Jesus sorted out her problem. Let's conclude. So, please, one thing you must do in this meeting is to tell us who your husband is. Are you hearing me? 
You're not hearing me. I know you are very quiet and you should be quiet. The question that they are asking the Bible calls for quietness. Who is my husband? How many? How many are they? They are up to four. When I go back now, I'll go to the first one, I go to the second one. That, that is not the question. The question is that you must resolve the matter of husband. Are you hearing me? Children, you must resolve the matter of husband. You know, first have become husbandless. Your father cannot account for you. Your mother cannot account for you. Your uncle that you are saying we cannot account for you. After school, you go about. When you get home at 8 o'clock, say, What happened? You say, We are doing prep. We are doing this. Is that what you are doing? Is that why you went to the, to the, to the well at 12 o'clock in the afternoon? Something is fishing. Something is fishing. Some of us go to churches. Say, tell us who your disciple is. What is disciple? Discipleship is God's ordained pathway. There's no other way. You don't have anybody over your life. Then Jesus will say, I'm not over you too. You must have a human disciple if the Lord will accept you. Are you hearing me? I'm saying this very strongly in this meeting maybe for the last time. Because I don't know when the revival will break up because we're in a revival. But I know that God loves you so much that He's asking you to go and bring your husband. That's what is, that's what is holding you between you and the Bible. Hallelujah. I have no husband. If you say the truth, God will help you. So, let me finish up. You must say unto him, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship God in this mountain. I said in Jerusalem is the place where you, men ought to worship God. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comment, when you shall neither in this mountain, neither yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. See this, you see the question the woman raised? Eh? The woman raised the question about worship. So we're going to get a husband. Because there's no husband to get. There's no husband to get. So the woman said, I believe you're a prophet. So the our father has told us that this mountain is where to worship God. Eh? <laughs> this mountain is where to worship God. Password now. So I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our father has worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, and now and when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem. Worship the Father. The hour is coming. When neither in, neither in this month nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Are you hearing me? Where you worship God now does not matter. You worship God in a mountain. You worship God in Jerusalem. You worship God in any church. It doesn't matter. What matters is this. For the hour you worship, you know not what. We worship what we worship, we know what we worship for salvation of the Jews. But the hour comes, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father where? In spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh sought to worship Him. God is spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. I will leave the rest. I don't know where our brother is going to come from tomorrow. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is the second question I want to answer tonight. Where do you worship God? Some years ago, some people came back from one meeting in UK or US. They said, you want to worship God? Let's face here. Then let's face here. And pray and pray and pray. Let's face here. God is spirit. 
they had nowhere to face to worship. I not in Jerusalem, we are not, we are not idol worshippers. Worship God, we are not, we are not Jews who worship God to face one place. It's a spirit. They are worshiping, most worshiping how? Spirit and in truth. For such are the people that God is seeking, seeking to worship my this time. And those who worship my, those who are going to be in Shriva. My brothers and sisters, I want to, I, I should give you a call. Because we don't know what we're worshiping. You are not supposed to worship God in a building, alone. Not in a building. Not when you are facing somewhere or somewhere. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Some of us have become too religious. But until you enter into a building, kneel down at the altar and not worshiping God. No. You can worship God in that altar. You can worship God in a building. But that's not the only place where you worship God. God is spirit. In fact, to worship God, you must first of all come to God and believe that He is. That's the reward of those that diligently seek Him. Sinners don't worship God. If you are committing any sin in your life, any sin at all, no matter how small or how big, you cannot call yourself a sinner. You cannot call yourself a worshiper. When we want to worship God, we must abhor all sin. We must have been excluded from all sin. You'll be here at this meeting and you are married to somebody who is not your husband. You are having sex with many, many people. If you don't please with that, how can you say you are worshipping God? And this meeting is a good meeting where everybody who is, who is coming here looks consecrated. I don't know. I don't know whether to say it or not to say it again. Sin of the tongue. Many people who gossip find you a, a carrier. You can talk about somebody's, somebody, somebody's misbehavior for very many days. And I do hear say, this person, this thing happened. What is that? What is that? Don't want to talk now. Sin, sin, sin. Sin. But tonight God can forgive you your sins. And you can turn around and worship God in spirit and in truth. Turn around and worship God sincerely from your heart. And anytime you fall into sin, you come out quickly and confess not to live in sin. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? If you want a revival, and this man was the first revivalist revival we caught in that village. That's a metal village. If you know how God caught her, all the questions he asked, she thought she was joking with Jesus to avoid something, but she was asking accurate questions. Hey, look, we used to worship on this mountain, but it looks like this mountain is not the place because the Jews worship God in Jerusalem. What do you say? These are, these are questions that we are leading her into the perfect will of God. And she went back and said to the people, I have seen a man. And the whole village trooped out. There was a massive revival there for days. Why won't you have a revival? Why must you continue in sin that grace may abound? Why must you continue He's seen that grace. That's why we're talking about discipleship. So tonight I expect that all of us who are sinners or who are committing sin regularly should come out of sin. Are you hearing me? I know that times are hard. You say it's difficult now to, to avoid seeing the business. Former it is hard. Is that why you must commit sin? 
in every application where you are committing sin, it will lead you into, into, into a place you don't want to go. If you must come to Jesus and worship in spirit and in truth, you must stop sinning. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Time is over. Time is past. I have two questions tonight. Number one question. Go and call your husband. Go and call your husband. Go and call your go and get your husband. Go and get your father. Go and get your disciple. The Lord is asking you, go and get your disciple. May be a student on the campus. Or say, who is your disciple? Who is your disciple? Who is your father? Who is an authority over you? To whom are you submitting? We are going to go away very quickly. In every center, you must answer this question. Just give me a few minutes, I'm going to finish. The second question is concerning worship. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Those are the good that we make it. If you're a sinner, you're not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Not only those who face Jerusalem or face the mountain. If you are if you are if you're a sinner, confess your sins. Beg God. Ask the Holy Ghost to come into your heart. You must be born again. You must be converted. Beg God. If you have if they have been converted and you are committing sin regularly, you are not converted. Tonight may be the time when you will be converted. Please pray with me. 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 Le poco so koto lo prosca, le brasca na ma shiri ma kuri ma kanda, le praka sato le prosca ne ma shiria, le poco so koto lo prosca na ma shiri ma kuria. Lord, please help us. Lord, please help us. Help us in this meeting. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Let us enter the revival. Let us be. The first recipients help us to go forward in the revival. Help us to lift up our eyes to the to, to lift up our eyes and see properly that the harvest is already ripe. Help us not to miss the revival because we are looking down. Oh Lord. Help us. Help us. Difficulties around us must not make us to miss the revival. O oh Lord, Marika Turi Makanda, Libra Kasakata Lambros Kanama Sheri Makuria, Lepa Kusoko to Lombros Kanama de Makuria Makanda. Lord, save your people. Save your people. Put them on the path to revival. It's around the corner. Help them to join the revival. This Samaritan village. Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. Help us, O oh God. 
When the day breaking, the day is breaking, the day is breaking, oh God. Help us to, to come out of our, our old bedclothes. Help us to put off our old bedclothes and put on and put on new clothes for the days are days at hand. Help us to, 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 to go, run away from all the seas. Lord, we pray that we turn around very well. Ma 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 sa katarabasuko. Le proko sente le mpras kanda ma sheri ba kuri makanda rabazi kuri makanda. Holy Spirit, help us, help us, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. If no, you have no husband, no disciple. If you have no father, there's nobody over your life. And you know that you are committing sin. There are sins in your life that it's evident that you're not you're not born again. You're not born again properly. I want you to please raise up your right hand. I want to pray sincerely for you tonight. Raise up your right hand. Please, I want to pray for you sincerely tonight. Raise up your right hand. We must pray. We must pray. We must pray. In any center where you are, raise up your right hand. Center leaders, take note. If you are not born again, or you are born again, you are backsliding, you want to re be restored. You say, Lord, I am backsliding. I want to be restored. This is the right moment to be restored. Because I don't know whether what is going to happen tomorrow morning. So, if you, are, if you need restoration, stretch forth your right hand. Let me see it. Let me see your right hand. Let me see your right hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the challenges you have challenged us tonight. We bless your name because you are the Lord. We cannot question you. We cannot ask you why. We only have to obey. We pray that, Lord, you will, you will deal with us. Deal with the questions you have asked us. Make us like that Samaritan woman that you saved at the well. Bring us into, into, into the village again to call the villagers to you. Make us part of the vanguard of your survival, O oh God. To allow us to waste our lives. We beg you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us. Help us, Lord, because the days are evil. Help us, Lord, because the days we did, you need, you need people to, to be called out to revival. There are many things we are passing in church which is, not, which is not going to lead to revival. And we are being deceived. But Lord, you are, you are able to call us, call us out of those things and make us instruments of your revival. Look, instruments of your revival. Look at how you call a, 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 a woman who is a sinner who has had five husbands and she became the first revivalist in that village. Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. In the name of Jesus. God, that will not miss your revival. We will not miss anything you are doing at this hour. We will be articulate. We will be, we will be, we will be present. We will be, we, will be, we, will, we will be lifting up our eyes all the time. So that we will not miss it. Lord, as we come back tomorrow morning, continue with us. And Lord, do what no man can do. We beg you, Lord, because we know that you are going to do us good. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. You are the love of my heart. Desire.